Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier, here with you on a Tuesday, March 10th. Uh, this is No Sound Bites Allowed, and folks, I'm just, I had a whole idea of what I was going to speak about with coronavirus, and I'm going to try and remember that. I, I've just been amazed though. Uh, I'm actually somewhat in shock, and not, and I don't want this to be negative, but I was just speaking with a, a younger gentleman, uh, a few decades younger than myself, and I'm just amazed because we're talking about writing a check, mailing a check for payment, and the difference in generations where that's commonplace for someone my age, I'm 52, whether I look it or not, I'm 52, and I'm listening to a far younger person in their 20s talk to me about the difficulties of writing a check um, and their, well, distrust th and and lack of familiarity with it and from my point of view it's it's just so very shocking then again i have to say at the same time it's shocking to hear i'm sure for someone of uh in their 20s in the current generation that they're looking at you know writing a check is got to be shocking to them as well so i mean it's there's your generation clash there's the difference in america in just you know one two decades the differences of technology and the way people look at making payments. And so completely threw me. So I'm just a little amazed there, folks. Uh, and again, I'm not picking on anyone. I'm not saying it's good, it's bad. It's just amazing to see the stark difference in the way we approach paying bills and just looking at the economy and looking at the world now that we have so much of a dependence on the internet which of course, oddly enough, I'm using myself to speak to you all. But that I think kind of also goes into what I was going to talk about, which is about the coronavirus. And, you know, I have a very interesting thought. I was thinking about this yesterday. I was sending out messages to a local radio, a talk radio station this morning, which they were reading. And I see the coronavirus as very political. There is nothing but politics in there. This isn't as big an issue as it should be, or rather as it is. The coronavirus right now across the world is somewhere around 4,000 reported cases or so. Uh, excuse me, 4,000 deaths around the world. There's six point some odd billion people in the, in the world. Uh, in the United States, there are 27 confirmed deaths at this moment. Think about that for a moment. We have 350 million people in the United States, 27 have died from the coronavirus. That's one weekend in Chicago. That's one weekend in Baltimore. That's one weekend, maybe two, in Detroit. Th this is the severity that we're talking about. This is what has caused the stock market to crash. This is what has what's caused a possible wide ranging negative impact on almost every business in the stock market. This is what's stalling businesses across the world. 27 people, one weekend in Chicago is crippling the economy of the United States. Is it, does that, when we put it in perspective, does that make sense? Or conversely, why aren't we having this discussion of the absolute horror and terror of the shootings in Chicago every weekend if the coronavirus is so absolutely devastating, if 27 people being dead in the nation is absolutely destroying the economy, what is going on about Chicago and Baltimore and Detroit? And I am not making light of the deaths that have happened. I am sorry for each and every one of them. I am sorry for the families and my condolences to each of them for their loss. But at the same time, Let's put this into perspective, people. I mean, look at the hype that's coming out of the media. Look at the hype, absolute hype, that is coming out there about how this is going to, this is the new bubonic plague, with no evidence that it is. Around the world, the, the number of deaths around the world at this moment doesn't even hit the number of drunk driving deaths in the United States alone. Let's put this into perspective. So why is there so much hype? Why is there so much news media 
constantly telling us that the coronavirus is going to be devastating, that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands will die, which we don't know will happen. You know, on that's on a global basis, which quite honestly, on a global basis, isn't that big a deal. So many other things, almost everything has equal or more deaths in the world globally. So why is there so much of an emphasis right now about the coronavirus? And I have to tell you, I think it's because most people have forgotten Bill Maher, approximately two years ago, said he wants to see the economy crash. Democrats were saying they wanted a recession, that that was their way to win the 2020 election. And this is the perfect opportunity. We've gone through so many other, we always hear about all these diseases and how huge they're going to be. I mean, think about Ebola. There was a massive worldwide, I mean, 11 cases in the United States, nine people survived, two people died, wanted to change the entire healthcare system because of Ebola. That's the politics. And I see that those who are younger, who are more internet dependent, who read just the headlines, they believe this stuff. They believe it's very important. They believe the headlines they're reading, not the stories, not the context. They're not even looking at context. They don't know what the context is. In much the same way that my younger associate was speaking to me about, they don't know what a check is. This is, they don't have that context. They don't have that life experience to look at it and go, well, maybe, maybe this isn't as big as we're being told. Maybe this isn't as terrifying as we're being told. Maybe this isn't as insane as we're being told because it's not, but it is politically advantageous. It is what Bill Maher asked for. It is what Democrats were asking for. This is devastating the economy. This is causing a concern about the election. This is giving Democrats, Joe Biden, an opportunity to possibly have a fighting chance, which realistically we all know he doesn't. I mean, quite honestly, the Democrats right now are not fighting for the win of the 2020 election. They're fighting for control of their party. They're fighting to keep out the Democratic Socialists. They're trying to keep Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez at bay. That's what this is all about. That's what the 2020 Democratic nomination is about. It's a power play being played out in front of the nation under the pretext of trying to beat Donald Trump, which they know they cannot do. They don't have the numbers. No one is that interested in any of the Democratic candidates, especially Bernie, especially Biden. They don't have what it takes. So you have to wonder to yourself, what is really going on? You know, I, I recently said, I was speaking on um, the news recently, and I had to say, what is, how can we prepare for an unknown disease that's going to have an unknown severity, that's going to happen at an unknown time? You can't. All you can do is have a proper response. And the United States has had a good response. Although people want to open up the borders, that would allow more people to come into this nation legally and illegally. And spread that infection you know that's not a smart idea that's why chuck schumer removed his tweet when president trump first said we're going to restrict travel from china to the united states to help prevent this from spreading faster which was the right answer so what we're going to have to look at and what we have to consider folks is what's the politics that's really going on and let's understand that a lot of people are so dependent on the internet without verifying any of the sources, without looking at any of the details. They're following the headlines, and in following the headlines, all they're getting is a superficial answer that is meant to promote fear and help certain political viewpoints. Now, you can call that conspiracy theory if you want. You can say that, well, Mike, you're just pulling at loose threads, but let's look at it for what it is. Most of the media is left-leaning. Most of the media agreed with Bill Maher. Most of the media want to see the Democrats have a fighting chance, and they can't do it if the economy is doing well. So this is Bill Maher's hope for a recession. And if you don't believe me that he said that, please look it up. You'll see the quotes. You'll see him saying this live. 
So what do I see with the coronavirus? I don't see that this is something as, as horrific, at least at this point, as the bubonic plague. It isn't the wrath of God coming down in the form of a virus to punish the human beings. That's not what I see. And will the numbers go up? Of course they will. Is it going to be worse than the number of people who die from drunk driving every year? Is it going to be more than the number of suicides that happen every year? Probably not. But that doesn't mean it's not a bad thing. But let's keep in mind, what's worse is the way we are being manipulated emotionally to react through fear and to hold politicians accountable for something that could not be accounted for. And that, we, and it, that this is being targeted to generations who are so unfamiliar with fact-checking, from reading different sources, from reading the articles, generations that don't know how to do things that some of us consider commonplace, like writing a check. When you look at it in that context, this is a preparation of what's going to happen to the future. This isn't about 2020. Oh, the coronavirus, the 2020 election, control of the Democratic Party, whether it's by socialists or whether it's by prog progressives, isn't about today and this election. It's about the future. And if we don't pay attention to that, and if we don't keep that in mind, I, I really fear what's going to happen next. Because it doesn't look good. I don't know. This is my thought. I hope you may have uh, some interesting thoughts on this as well. It's Michael Voss. You can reach me at MV Consult on Twitter. You can reach me at No Sound Bites Allowed on YouTube. And of course, on uh, Facebook, you can reach me at Voss Political Commentary. I want to hear your thoughts. You tell me what you think. And, you know, hopefully everyone's going to be healthy and well. I'm absolutely sure of it. I think 90% of everybody who sees this is going to be perfectly fine. Uh, and I'm glad about that. So, folks, I want you to be well, and we'll talk again soon.